I'm so glad that you all made it at such a late time of the day, such a beautiful sun. Um, what I want to talk about now is um, something that you already know, that you all have heard about. Um, it's nothing new, but I still think I need to talk about that. And uh, that is first the need for Wikimedians in residence. Uh, we're talking about the global south now. Um, mostly, most of the time in countries that don't have a community, uh, that have a very rich cultural history. Now what's happened is, in one example, you're probably not familiar with that building, that's a museum of military history in Luanda, Angola. Now the country of Angola has a long history of military strife and uh, lots of the way how the country is shaped now and how the people are living has to do with uh, military conflicts in colonial times uh, and after. Uh, they did build a museum about that to inform the people what happened in the past. Um, now about this museum, it's closed about 95% of the time. Uh, then the 5% 5 5 of the time that it's open, it's mostly closed because the minister maybe has to visit a foreign country, so what he does is close the place, choose the best piece, so he has a present to bring. Um, which means most of the population uh, does not have access to their own past. First, it's in the capital, it costs door fee, and nobody can really see it. One way to get this information to everybody is to put it in the internet. Now we know that uh, cellular phones, uh, mobile phones are very far spread in Africa. Almost everybody has them. We do have Wikipedia Zero, whatever you think about it, but um, that is a way to bring all this knowledge to the population. Um, I can give you another example from Africa. Um, most of you won't be familiar with that writing. Um, it's the Gis, which is um, the ancient Amharic, the ancient Ethiopian writing. Now, Ethiopia has a history of writing which dates back to the 5th and 6th century. That was the first time they made Bible transcriptions. Uh, this is not a good example because it's the, only, the oldest picture I could find in comments. It's um, 15th century. Um, but uh, they do have uh, scripts written on paper, on scrolls, uh, that are 1,500 years, years old. Uh, they mostly are stacked and piled in monasteries on mountains in the basement without any air conditioning and never ever handled with gloves. So what will happen? They will disappear. They are 1,500 years old and uh, they don't, simply don't have a future. Um, one way to get this information and the own history of the people to the people would be to write about them, and to write about them in the media that's accessible to everybody. Um, and one way to do that is to have a Wikipedian in residence who is in contact with the cultural heritage and is the bridge between the culture and our projects. Um, now the problem is that in this country, most of the time you don't have a community, you don't have anybody skilled in what the wiki world is, in what projects we have. Um, what we did, for example, was uh, schooling them, picking participants from different countries and giving them a crash course. Now there are certain things that you have to keep in mind when doing that, and I will talk a, a little about some of them. Um, the first one is how to pick applicants. Um, if you spread out the world that you do a schooling for becoming a Wikimedian residence to become very skilled in Wikipedia and anything wiki, uh, the, the normal answer in the applications you get, I've got a few examples here, um, 
we asked about uh, what do you expect with your new skills to achieve. So the first applicant wrote, with this training, I will be able to reach millions and in a few years, billions. The second, in five years, I have the vision to teach one million Wikipedia users. The third one, less than 10 percent. No, OK, I, I think you've got the picture. Uh, so the very first thing you have to teach the people is to take small steps. If you say, so what do you have in mind? Who could you contact? Like anything below the president is beyond their imagination. Um, less than 10% do not lie about their achievement. <laughs> Highly inflated or outright completely invented. So if you ask uh, what um, experience do you have with Wikipedia, they say we wrote hundreds of articles and you, you search their names, they don't have a single edit. Uh, it's all well meant. They see a chance um, that they have, a chance in a lifetime, but you have to be very careful who you pick, who you see a future in. Um, and there are certain contents that have, be, have to be taught. Now, you would probably all be aware of them. Uh, first, for instance, how to quote, how to format citations. There are lots of tools for helping you with that. Then one very important thing is tracking and reporting. Now, um, if you want to have a project as a Wikimedia in residence, it's so much easier to get one if you can show them other projects that have been, that, and, and see, uh, show them the tracking of these projects show them what has been achieved by this project. And very important, open licenses. Um, what are Creative Commons licenses? What licenses are there? Um, I can give you one example. We did a full day workshop uh, on Creative Commons licenses. We invited the, the lead and, uh, of, of Creative Commons. We had card games. Uh, where you can learn Creative Commons licenses. We asked everybody if they understood everything, everybody agreed, and the next day you see some of them loading up uh, movie posters. Um, you really have to be careful. Um, another example, there were wonderful projects with museums, um, very big projects. They uploaded the files. They all claimed uh, they were by themselves, they're free license, and they were not, they all were deleted. So, a big effort of inviting people to a capital. Um, you have to be really certain that they understood what a Creative Commons license is. Um, a very nice thing that I can recommend is to bring in. Uh, actual Wikimedians in residence, uh, for instance, by Skype, by Google Hangouts. Uh, what I did before a schooling session like this is to contact every single one who's ever been a Wikimedian in residence. Now, some are in a different time zone, always, and it would be three in the morning for them. But some of them are happy to agree and teach them directly, and then they can have the real experience from a Wikimedia in residence, from the problems he had. I had, for instance, uh, Liam Wyatt uh, sending video tutorials, who was the Wikimedia liar in the British Museum. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it helped that he was not in Australia, but in Italy. <laughs> and uh, John Cummings, for instance, who um, was a Wikimedia in resident at UNESCO. Uh, Tim Moritz Hector who was at uh, the ZTF German television. They all were happy to um, contribute. Um, one thing that makes it easy to make teaching workshops is to get support from local partners. Um, you feel, really should take the opportunity to get into the open movement can, to see who can support you. They're all willing to help. Another goal that these people have that you send out into the field is community building. And 
I would like to have your input on how to do that, on ideas, uh, how to better build communities in countries that don't have any community. Now, one way, for instance, is to, to start workshops in schools, in universities, um, and um, because it's, it's so much easier to have the workload if you have a community that helps you, you could uh, distribute um, it to many shoulders. Um, you, can, you can start uh, competitions, exhibitions, anything to get is more widely known in the countries and then get people to help you. Now, um, when I proposed this talk, I said I'm going to talk for five minutes and then I want to have all the input that I can have. Because I know you all have been dealing with Wikipedia and wiki movement in the outside world. It's not just you writing and then seeing it on the screen. Uh, Wikipedia has an impact. And, um, but how can it have an impact in a country that has no wiki history? that does not have any community at all. So maybe somebody has an idea? Well, maybe I can ask, ask well, I guess you could just go to your local museum. Um, for example, I live in London. The British Museum has things from all sorts of cultures. You could photograph the exhibits from that culture and write about them, and then uh, get in touch with, try to get in touch with people from that country and encourage them to contribute and expand based on this, a little sort of seed that you started. Uh, then again, uh there has been a long time Wikipedian residence in the British Museum, and England is a country that does have a community. I believe one thing you should kind of concentrate on is to not reach a large amount of people in countries which do not have a community. I think it's very important that you get a few which is very engaged because when you're leaving, when you're no longer in that community supporting it, it should be sustainable without you. And having a few engaged people, it's much more important than that you have reached a lot of people there who made a few edits. So what is for instance, if you school somebody to be available for him for any questions afterwards, to really monitor and help them month and month after that. You're right. Um, there's one question I wanted to ask Lane. Now, Lane is a long time Wikipedian in residence in the USA. And how do you get the information you transmit as a Wikipedian in residence into the community, into the outside world? My name's Lane, as uh, he said. I live in New York. I've been a Wikipedian in residence at a nonprofit magazine since 2012. Uh, I share mostly medical information, and one of the strange and wonderful things about working with Wikipedia is that you're not working in an information sector like medicine or art. You're working in publishing. So when I was looking for a model of how to share medical information on Wikipedia. And there's nobody, there's no other community other than Wikipedia that would tell you this. But the best way to share medical information on Wikipedia is to follow the precedent that was set in the arts and humanities sector. That is, uh, you look to see what's happened in glam institutions, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, 
and do the same kind of events, such as an edit-a-thon or visit a university and offer student training to share this kind of information. And the same kind of precedents that were set in these cultural institutions, it can apply to medicine, it can apply to science, it can apply to any sort of information. So I would encourage anyone who's uh, thinking about trying to serve in a Wikipedia in residence role to look at the precedents that have been set, talk with other Wikipedians in residence, and what's worked for them, it can work for anyone sharing any kind of information. So oh, I just um, want to show you one picture from uh, Wikimedia and World Cup schooling um, project we had. There are the people we trained. It was lots of fun. And um, so, is there any other input? If not, I just want to give you, give, uh, get you home with the story of the knowledge fox. Now, um, that's actually from my, my small home, hometown. And the story is there was a dwarf, or if you're politically correct, a midget, um, looking for gold under the earth, like they do in fairy tales. And he was completely lost because he didn't have any information. Uh, he didn't know anything. But then, by chance, he grabbed the tail of the fox. And the fox knew his premises, he knew everything. He's full of information and could lead him. And the fox knew that he, this, this midget was going to steal gold. So he led him out of the cave. So we're living in a world where you, when, you, when everything around is black and you don't have any information, you're not getting anywhere. And what we do through Wikipedia and Wikimedia is bringing light and showing people the way, because if you have this information, you get where you want to go, like this fox. Okay, thank you.